Hey, what's up guys? So, once again, as you can see, we are back at the uh, Club Custom and thanks to Mark today, we're gonna have a very special video coming up with him and Mr. John of Sharp Brothers because Mark, as you know, is developing his own version of the 9x39 based on, of course, with the Sharp Brothers MB47 with his magic, of course, a little bit of magic um, so in the next video, after this one, of course, we're gonna um, have John and Mark talk about a little bit how they John design everything and what's their uh, how they're gonna actually improve the design in order to be used with the 9x39. John Sharps. We make an MB47 receiver. We sell it to Mark Krebs, and he is now producing some really boss 9x39 builds. And we're just here talking about changes that Sharps is going to make for Krebs so that he has a custom receiver for the 9x39. Uh, part of these mods uh, were made to uh, fit a uh, specific forehand group that we have for it and uh, the gas block and everything which is kind of uh, large we have a bull barrel in it um, this is uh, unfortunately we couldn't get it finished in time but this is uh, what's going to be happening we're going to have a uh, midwest Industries scope rail on there we got the Krebs handguard we've mm -hmm. actually opened up the magwell for them given this sort of sort of Galil style cut um, and some guts I guess you probably have to Yeah and um, we're using a Galil, ga Galil style gas tube um, it's, uh, it's a long story but this is what works the best with the system uh, for no snag and uh, they're operating nice and smooth and um, we hope to have them out in about five weeks. Uh, people have been asking about prices and stuff, but um, it's been hard to get it together. We were going to come out with the Galils first um, and the Sharp second, but we can't get Galils, so we're doing the Sharps. And, uh, I'd go broke if I had to do all the machine work on these again, um, but John is going to take these and uh, we're going to uh, refine it as a 9x39 receiver and uh, he's very open to uh, the things that I am requesting and is not a yes man either. <laughs> and. Uh, it's working out real well and I'm just kind of proud of it and I, I think these are uh, they're nice I've got, excellent I've receivers got, I've got a prototype 9x39 that Mark built and was in the gearhead booth at SHOT Show and I've been shooting it is it's an amazing little truck gun Tool is making 245 grain subsonic subsonic ammo for it now it hits like a sledgehammer looking forward to killing hogs with it here soon um, I'm actually super excited to be using the MD-47 because uh, we put a ton of time into these and I'm really happy to make some modifications so that you have a 9x39 nine by nine, nine by specific mill no, receiver. Yeah, baby. This is, uh, how many grains is this? Is this 245 as well? That, no, that's 275. This is 275 Lehigh Defense opened up. That's yeah, almost a little... <laughs> yeah, about that's funny. I know, it's a little disconcerting almost. <laughs> it should be hell on hogs though. Yep, yep. Put down whatever you need. Um, yeah, and we were we were discussing differences between the Galils and the Vomits, um, which is kind of an interesting history, but uh, for another day. Uh, that's why we have all these other firearms out. Another item that uh, I would like to bring up when I was talking about uh, everybody uh, collaborating here to get this project going um, 
including David Fortier and Wolf Ammo and uh, all of that, is Liberty Suppressor. Dave Sel Sailors uh, is making these cans and they are very quiet, they're very light, and they're very small. Um, I don't think this gun is any longer than a VSS and uh, I'd, I'd love to do a decibel test compared you know one to the other well the, uh, when we were I, shooting that day that was a the, and they're gonna see some footage in here of that and it's not a very good representation because of that canyon well, yeah, in, but you can still thing, when we were in a tree forested area and when you get stuff like that you get sound bouncing all over the place and it's really kind of hard to show uh, but in another three weeks we're going to go out to an open field and uh, we're going to shoot it and it's always hard to tell how well a suppressor is working the best you can really do is kind of compare it to the the noise the action makes mm -hmm. you know uh, yeah, you because can doctor you can make it up. anything right. sound good on. Yeah, the ca the camera doesn't do justice. <laughs> yeah. So, but Liberty Suppressor has also been uh, very supportive. I mean, they got these to me like instant, and they made it specifically for the nine by thirty nine. It'll work on a nine, you know, of course, yep. and it's set up for the IMS. But I'm sure they'll be making them with a, a five eight uh, twenty four thread as well once it starts kicking off. So these things are, I, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I, th I think these are gonna be uh, uh, very good shooters and uh, hopefully we get a lot of people buying them. Um, if anybody needs ammo, you just call up the shop and we can have it drop shipped to you for 65 cents a round. All right, so John, Mark, give us a little background into the inspiration on the receiver and the gun and the collaboration between the two of you are doing. Okay, well, so we're here actually talking about the 9x39, but for us it started life as our MD47 receiver, which is our 7.62x39 receiver. Each one of these is milled from a, a solid 15 pound block of 4140 steel. Um, and we're really proud of the results. We can only make maybe 20 of them in a week running across two shifts or 10 a week just on a single shift. It's a crazy amount of machine time. But this is our standard MB47 and this is the 9x39 version that we're going to be producing for Krebs. Um, inspired largely by the Glial. Let me talk about some of the changes you asked for that. Well, the, uh, actually we were planning on doing them with your receiver straight, but we have all our forend uh, arrangement here uh, geared for the Galil, yeah. and we don't want to really change that, so we're radiusing it enough to get the uh, uh, forend up into position and to where you can bolt it on there easily, and it also aligns with the gas block. There's a few things that you got to consider doing all this um, and uh, uh, but John's going to be doing all the cuts um, if I was I'll tell you man I altering these receivers was uh, a lot of work and you know it's kind of funny because you, you hear people go oh my god it costs that much and I look at this stuff personally and I go how can you machine it for that little yeah. uh, this is an incredible amount of work you know and these are really rigid receivers and uh, I have high hopes for accuracy on these uh, the machine receiver I don't know that it adds a lot to the actual accuracy of an AK until you get onto a scope. Um, there, there is some inherent real, uh, accuracy with the machine receiver, but when you couple it with a scope mount, it, it really starts making a difference. Yeah, I mean, it takes out a lot of the flex. So most of the, I mean, originally when we there, tell there people- There is no flex in these things. Yeah. These are, originally when we start shooting these, 
just the 762 by 39 guns, we were seeing sub MOA groups. And man, even telling people about that would elicit really negative reactions of like, we must be bullshitting, you know? But right. they, we're just not. I mean, it's they make for very, very accurate. No, if you yeah. do something new and different, you're gonna get beat on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's if you, the. If you guys know our uh, AR receivers, <laughs> which are quite different, like we're kind of we're past uh, worrying about negative feedback. You get lots of it, for and against. But passion either way drives sales. So you know, hate on. You got it. And uh, just for a little bit of history's sake, uh, this is a Volmet M62 which uh, might look a little bit like a Galil to you. And it's part of the lineage of the Galil itself. Um, they added diff slightly different sights. Uh, they had the upturned off handle and they added the thumb, thumb safety. Um, this mag release uh, made a lot more sense when this gun came out because this is the M62 and it had a bicycle type grip on it which makes this very easy to hit with your index finger um, and that's kind of why Galil went away with it and then with mag sweeps being uh, pretty much the predominant uh, mag changing uh, we went to an extended release so you could get to it in the old the old galil or the old vomit this absolutely stops you from doing it even though i love this gun and would never sell it uh, a good friend of mine died gave me this because uh it was one of the first um, hybrid AKs out there, it, it, where they, a government or a, a large group really started to look at the gun. And the reason why they did all this is to make these guns, it was less expensive to them because the stamping and huge tools it takes to make a stamped AK, by the time they invested in that, and everything, they could actually make these guns cheaper, even though they're known for quality and precision, you know? Um, and that's just a little useless information for you. Interesting. I know it's a hair off subject, but I know there's gonna be a ton of questions, and John, you were commenting how cool it was. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you did there with the uh, oh, yeah. Bren grip? Um, this is what we're considering. Um, uh, now this has to be sold as a short barreled rifle, unfortunately, and uh, this is a uh, 4130 hinge that I made, and this is actually a Bren gun, machine gun handle, uh, the barrel handle. And uh, it's got an AMD grip, and I'm gonna make a uh, laminated buttstock for it that slides in and out. But it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. very, anyway. very road warrior ish in yeah. a way. Yeah, Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. Mad Max style. But, but way cool. Way cool. Should be a Mad, yeah. mad Crab style. There you go. <laughs> no, well, Alex, my head gunsmith, is. Uh, He's nut and he likes building oh, yeah. way stuff and it started to grow on me. Uh, <laughs> this is probably going to end up being a post-apocalyptic pickup. Uh, so we'll see how it ends up. But uh, that's kind of interesting. We're going to be doing some on Sharks receivers too. Yeah, cool. See what happens here. And oh! One other thing, uh, we need to give these guys some juice. They worked very hard on it. Uh, we supplied the gun and ammo and magazines and different things like that. And C-Spec uh, busted their ass to get out 10, 20, and 30 round magazines. Uh, they are now selling them uh, to the public, uh, so they are available. And uh, it's a beautiful mag. I. Um, haven't got thousands of rounds through these, but I've shot probably 
20, 30 uh, individual mags that were just out of the packaging and not a hiccup. Um, yeah, same with me. I've, I've got that prototype and I'm 39 drilled using those mags and it's having any issues with it. Cool. Yeah, the yeah. ones we shot that day were, were flawless. flawless. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we'll throw well, some. One of the cool things about having the larger projectile is it feeds just a tad higher. So the tip of the bullet uh, really does not engage the feed ramp. It just kind of squirts it on in there. And as you know, you know, you can't, you can't deform your bullet nose and have a, a you know, a track and bullet. You know, it's going to start to lose stability. Can, I, can, I, can you tell us a little bit more about the new Engar too that I see you've been using on the, on the gun over there? It's oh, this is a um, handguard for the Galil pistols, which we're going to be coming out with shortly. Also, we're going to be coming out with the rifle length uh, in this same style. And uh, we beefed it up a little bit, um, but the whole gun, I believe when we get done with the rifle, is uh, eight ounces lighter than it was when we got it. And then the, um, the pistols are proportionately more uh, light because of the, the loss of uh, the plastic. And people don't realize that, that uh, plastic weighs approximately the same as aluminum. And uh, in some cases, plastic is better. You know, um, but I'm a steel guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, grips are great, you know, uh, stuff like that. In fact, if you walk in the cold with a wood grip, your hand will get real cold. And if you walk through the field with your uh, hand on a plastic grip, it'll stay warm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's different. We're kind of getting all over the place, but. Yeah. That's okay. Real it, thoughts, it's it's, you know? it, mm -hmm. it's good to see where the inspiration came from on these guns. It, it's cool to see it, uh, things get back toward that traditional mm -hmm. look. And just watching and listening to you guys with your collaboration today, and John being so gracious with uh, being so receptive to it. Uh, I think it's kind of a rare thing today yeah. where you see. <laughs> where, <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's, uh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's nice to see I, I'll two you, companies there, working there are so close. There troopers in this project. Oh, yeah. John is one, CS Spec is one, Banyan Barrels is one. I mean, man, we've had people working overtime doing small lots so we can get the stuff and try it before we get it done in mass production and uh, that is the most frustrating part about this whole game here is getting all the coordination together and uh, though everybody's cooperating but they also have obligations that you know they have to fill. Well I think it's such a neat platform and, and something that's obviously just gaining more and more traction mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's just going to be really cool to see it all come together. I'd hate to see your overnight shipping bill <laughs> for some of this yeah. stuff back you know, and forth. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to say too is that um, I've been too weak in people on these projects and what the, the problem is, is we were going to start out like I said on the Galil receivers and um, the, these take uh, a little bit more work and stuff like that and we were still getting product made mm -hmm. well we got all the product made and there are no Galils to buy of course and uh, I believe either one will shoot very well mm -hmm. um, I uh, but John's actually got the heavier, thicker walled receiver, and um, it's uh, though this cut lightens up quite a bit of that. Uh, but it's um, and we're trying to get prices right now. Uh, but we've got to we've got to build. I've got five of them all machined out, ready to go, so I can do a time study on it 
and we will come out with prices as soon as we possibly can. But to just arbitrarily give a price, uh, oh, three thousand dollars, you know, and nobody's going to want it, or we go, oh, two thousand dollars, and then it ends up being twenty-three or something mm -hmm. like that, and so we've got to be careful about. Should give a price, yeah. Well, uh, that, that, and I think if I can add that, I think once you own one, which I own a receiver, once you handle one and you compare to other product without taking anybody else's product, it's it's a well, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. First of all, it's also really, um, I think it's going to be perfect for what you guys are working on the 9x39. Even in a regular 762 pistol, I mean, it's going to be perfect because it's remind the old school. Miller receiver, the Russian style, well, the old one, but at the same time, it gives a little bit more of more than looking to the rifle. And uh, like you guys were saying, I'm I'm agree with you guys. I'm pretty sure yeah. that the accuracy is going to be in probably. John says that he, he, he gets uh, uh, probably three people a week tell him that he's a, a complete asshole for uh, putting the air, the, 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 the air buffer ah. on, the, on the back. Well, um, and uh, so, like I said, anytime you, you do something new, you know, and I'm sure all these people are riding to work in a, in a wagon. You yeah, know? but you, uh, <laughs> you on AK-5, you get 15, 20, so you're still beating him, so you have it, just have it. will never take off. <laughs> yeah, but I'm thinking, it's, you know, it's a matter of purist versus, you know. Well, I mean, it's, well, it's, it's kind it, of along the same lines, this was a, an original hybrid. Things, things evolve. You know? mm -hmm. Look at my AK safe. Uh, all my, all the AKs I got in my collection mm -hmm. are standard AKs. Yeah. I, uh, and for a running gun, you wanna, you wanna have the accessories that you need to help you deliver. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, that's what we strive for. That's what John strives for. Um, and I know his heart's in it, big time. Oh yeah. Here. And that's 90% of it, I think. Well, um, like John said, that's going to be the, the the ultimate truck gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I've got one already, you know. So I have a, I put a Gearhead Works pistol brace on it. I've got a tire and suppressor on the ends. And it is, it's nice. It's very nice. It's a really nice shooter. I think we mentioned already, you know, these are 245 grain uh, subsonic rounds. So they, at 245 grains, you know. They're, oh. they're hitting hard. They're they get a job done. Yeah. Like we're saying with Mark, suppressor or not, that's a pretty good home defense gun, oh, I yeah. think. <laughs> John, you got anything else to add? I don't. Got everything covered? Just how much he admires me. Yeah, and, and yeah it's like it's everybody. You know. yeah. I, I, there's a big picture of me above his mantle, you know. Yeah. Fireplace. Are you laying on a couch? No, no, it's the one. Yeah, no, 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 it's wearing speedo. I think it's wearing a speedo. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, we thank you both for your time, and I, I can say for the, for the AK community that to see a collaboration like this and to see such new, cool, innovative, quality stuff coming out, uh, we can't be happier, and we appreciate your time and. Uh, We'll have these uh, guns hopefully a couple weeks. We'll be out shooting them and we'll bring you that. And uh, that should be the next step, pretty cool. And then they should uh, be ready to go pretty quick after that, huh? Yeah, just a quick. We're, I think we're talking five weeks and that's not a myth. Um, and uh, just gotta, we'll be getting in the prototype receiver real soon and uh, checking it out. Uh, it'll still be soft, you know, but. Um, then the brunt of them will be coming. They're, they're going to start trickling out. We'll maybe have about 30 of them or so in the okay. beginning. Um, okay. And then uh, I guess that's about it. That's it. Um, what we're going to go now, it's pretty much a round down to the, this 9x39, which is going to be probably available in uh, five or six weeks. And uh, really, really cool. We have to change to shoot the hammer not specifically on this gun but that's actually a really impressive uh, round and uh, as you know everything Mark put his hands <laughs> it's, it's magic anyway that being said going from the front we have a Liberty cam mounted on IMS system of course made by Crab Custom the bull barrel 
and we have an um, UFM M guard, really slick looking M guard. Of course, the receiver, an MB47, heavily modified by Mark. You might want to keep looking, you're going to leave some good news. Um, the receiver has also a scope mount. And uh, the mag release extended, again by Krebs, an LG trigger. The magazine is specifically made for, by, for the 9x39 build by C Specs for Mark actually. Really nice magazine, really solid magazine. They will be also available um, for purchase, other than the one you're going to receive, of course, with a gun. You got a Tango Down pistol grip, which is, um, I like it, you know, pretty cool. Um, of course, because of the um, Sharp receiver, you can use on it very easily install an, a regular new spec buffer tube. In this case, we're gonna have a, a really cool um, tail hook by the gear head works. And uh, I have to say the gun is of course, of course, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the crab safety. The gun is also unloaded, no magazine. And as you can feel it, it's really, really smooth course as usual uh, I'm gonna have you a quick flyby gun porn whatever you want to call it with that being said nothing much I don't want to add anything else I want to let the big two guys uh, talk about this super cool project and uh, nothing much I'll uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming video bye yeah if you haven't checked it I know it's a little discretion but the uh, we already saw the AK receivers, but uh, the AR uh, lowers are actually beautiful. Like, you know, we, you, you know them if you're a gun guy, and uh, John put a lot of work on them, and it's, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. I mean, even an AK guy have to admit that actually they're looking yeah. good. <laughs> you know, We're trying for a jack, and everyone's safe. So yeah, yeah. Look the jack is, look up the jack. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Jack it's not an AK, but it's myself, good. <laughs> I gotta get myself a jack. I couldn't afford them before. <laughs> I, I got <laughs> um, Yeah, that's a. Uh, I own a lot of ARs too. People think that I just hate ARs for some reason, and yeah. I don't. You know, right over here. I know. Yeah. If that, it, it, somebody awesome. told Fabrizio that he's he, uh, he's paying me. He's the only one that will talk to me. Okay? Yeah. I mean, when, I, when, know, when he understand me, when he understand me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. If Wait you a think minute. he makes money doing this. You're wrong business. You are wrong. <laughs> Mark, I talk to you. It's just you're the only one that can understand him sometimes when he gets going fast. Yeah, that's the point too. <laughs> I, I that's talked what... to him when he was haired out the other day. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, guys. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, God, let's rush this thing along. I can't wait to see it, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Cool beans, yeah, we're gonna go shoot them. <laughs>